Chapter 15, Family Matters. The next technique that I wish to teach you, Wilson explained to the eagerly waiting dueling hearts assembled once again in the expansive main room of his dojo, is one that most soul fighters are able to tap, but few are able to master. I assume that all of you have some ability to sense the energies around you. He looked at each of them in turn and saw affirmation on their faces. This is because, as fighters, you have larger reserves of available energy than most people. You've trained your energy pools to be larger and closer to the surface than the average person. When the latent soul energy or life energy that your body radiates in invisible, harmless waves pushes off of the same energies being radiated by another person, you feel that pushback, even if you don't notice it consciously. I want to teach you how to actually send your energies out and track them consciously when they are pushed back at you. This will allow you to track your opponent's movements with certainty without having to see them, and even, eventually, learn to accurately judge their strength. Do you think the Soul Takers have mastered this technique? Jen asked, hanging on Wilson's every word. I do, Wilson answered with certainty, and I guarantee it's one of the main reasons that they were able to remain so effortlessly in control while fighting you. Once a sixth sense like this becomes second nature, a fighter will soon find that they respond to the input from that sense on instinct as they would their sight or their hearing. Joe thought about this and about how effortlessly Karen had kept ahead of her in their fight. Clearly what Karen had said was true. She was able to predict Joe's movements. But Karen had also, with a little obvious effort, been able to keep up with Joe when Joe had been acting in spite of her training. An ability like this sixth sense would explain how that was possible. It's actually because I intended to teach you this ability, Wilson explained, that I first taught you the life energy aura. I assume that all of you have managed to create it. The dueling hearts nodded, all except for Sarah, who didn't seem to want to look Wilson in the eyes. Young lady? Wilson asked, stepping closer to Sarah, his hands behind his back. I could do it, Sarah told him, reiterating what she had told Joe. Just not whenever I want, at least not yet. Wilson's gaze lingered on Sarah for a few seconds. Sarah continued to avoid his gaze. Joe knew that she was still ashamed by how far behind her opponent she had been. Her inability to close the gap immediately was just making her feel worse. Joe could understand that completely, so much so that she was about to speak up in her sister's defense when Wilson finally nodded. Okay, Wilson said, but that means you'll be pulling double duty for a while. Rather than simply practicing today's technique, you'll have to alternate practicing the aura and practicing sending your life energy out into the environment around you to expand your senses that way. It shouldn't be hard for you. I've seen you fight. You already know how to project your soul out into the air around you. This shouldn't be all that different. He walked over to a cabinet by the back wall and pulled it open. It was filled with protective pads as well as various first aid supplies, including rolls of bandages. He removed one of those rolls. Joe will be assisting me in the following demonstration. Joe was a little surprised, but she stood her ground as Wilson turned to face her, while the others stepped back off of the main mat. Wilson unrolled the bandages, walked over to Joe, and wrapped the bandages around her head again and again, covering her eyes and her ears until she couldn't even see light through the bandage, and her hearing was muffled. She immediately picked up on what the exercise would be. She took a couple steps back to what she judged to be the middle of the training space. She assumed her back stance and focused, mixing her soul and her life energy together, feeling both flare up at once. She grabbed hold of the new soul energy that was generated, holding it back, allowing her life energy to overflow. Then she turned her will upon that energy, making it wrap her up in its satisfying, warm golden glow. It was still difficult for her to keep the aura going, but Joe was the kind of person who, when push came to shove, refused to fail so much that it made a difference. She was able to put the stress of maintaining the aura out of mind and focus on the task at hand. Joe heard Wilson talking. Through the bandage and over the sound of her churning aura, it was a little difficult to hear, but she made do. What Miss Seeger is going to do, Wilson explained, is turn the energy of her life aura outward and try to bounce that energy off of everything around her. This should allow her to sense my life energy as well as dead zones where there are objects which possess no life energy at all. This will allow her to see me and where I am in the environment without actually having to use her eyes and, as such, avoid my attacks. So Joe did just that. She compelled the energy from her aura outward and felt for it to encounter resistance. She hadn't expected it to be simple, to come to her easily, but she had expected to feel something, and she didn't. Not only that, but now Wilson was trying not to be heard, so Joe didn't hear him at all when he approached and tagged her in the ribs with a series of quick, light jabs. On reflex, Joe turned in the direction of the attack. This was a mistake, and she knew it as soon as she did it. Wilson wasn't particularly strong at his age, and he wasn't putting any real effort behind his attacks anyway, but he was a skilled and careful enough fighter that he moved ahead of her. In fact, as soon as Joe turned, she was struck in the back, just above her kidneys, making it clear that if Wilson had wanted to injure her, he could have. 
So Joe stepped back, and she tightened her stance. She tried reshaping her aura, thinking that maybe that might make a difference. She thought that she felt the air stir, and she moved to avoid what she perceived as an oncoming attack, only to realize that she'd just felt her own aura, that she was allowing herself to get jumpy and had confused her senses. In the time that it took for that revelation to pass through her head, she was struck again, this time very lightly in the throat. Again, she could have been very seriously hurt, and if this were a real fight, she would have been. It was clear to Joe that she was going about this the wrong way. Rather than thinking of this ability as a new sense, she was still thinking of it as a tool, and relying on her other senses to aim that tool. She was trying to muscle her primary senses through the bandage and fight the same way she always had. She had to stop, so she squeezed her eyes shut tight and focused on the sound of her healing aura. More so than the blinder itself already had, Joe had impaired her primary senses. Once again, she reached out with her aura and felt for that energy to be bounced back at her. To her surprise, she was left with the impression that a man-sized form was moving toward her, reaching for the center of her torso. Joe reacted, a bit more slowly than she would have normally, sure, but it was still a reaction nonetheless. She stepped back and raised her hands, knocking the figure's hand to the side with one and then returning the figure's strike with the other. She felt her palm smash into something solid, and she sensed the figure stumble away from her, recover from the stumble, and then stand there calmly. All right, Wilson said, loud enough for Joe to hear him easily. That's enough for now. You can take the blinder off and power down. Joe dropped her aura. She was surprised by just how relieving it was to do so. In the heat of the exercise, she'd completely forgotten the strain that it put on her. But as the adrenaline began to subside, as she pulled the bandage from around her head, messing her hair up even more than usual, she was reminded of just how far she had to come before her healing aura would be truly viable. Eventually, Wilson explained, with enough practice, it should become second nature for you to use this ability at will, even over long distances, without using an aura of any kind, just like those three from the Soul Takers could. But right now, being so short on time, you'll have to make do with some shortcuts. The majority of the rest of the time that we have before your match will be spent trying to minimize the effort of keeping your new life energy auras going for substantial periods of time, using the increase in life energy output to improve your awareness of your surroundings and, if possible, to train to switch back and forth quickly between a life energy aura and a standard aura in a short amount of time to maximize your options in battle. Joe nodded. What Wilson was saying made perfect sense. Giving the dueling hearts the means to close the gap between themselves and the Soul Takers in this one way, even if only temporarily, gave them their best chance. After all, the Soul Takers had held back initially. If they did the same in their rematch, the dueling hearts might be able to catch them by surprise. It was still a risky and desperate plan, but it made more sense than trying to literally become so much stronger in so little time. Once you get good enough at this technique, Wilson continued to explain, you will be able to read someone's level of health and stamina with your life energy, and the raw strength of their soul and how much soul energy they still have available to them with your soul. Sarah perked up with that. That's right. You told us that we can do this, she struggled to find the words, this sensing people thing with either life energy or soul energy. So why not teach us to do it with soul energy? We already know all about controlling that. Wouldn't it be quicker? Wilson scrutinized Sarah again for a moment and then replied, a fully developed sixth sense will use both energies, often at the same time, to broaden the range of information that you can glean. But I think, in order to keep from getting your wires crossed, so to speak, that it will be more beneficial for you to learn this technique using life energy first, for two key reasons. He held up a finger. Firstly, a skilled fighter can suppress their soul energy until the moment that they strike, so as to prevent an opponent from tracking them using that source. I think that these three soul takers might be sufficiently skilled to do so. Another finger went up. Secondly, while all fighters have both life and soul energy, a construct made from soul would only have soul energy. Someone with the ability to sense life energy in someone also has the ability to detect a real person out of a group of illusions. Like the illusions that Karen created to trick me, Joe said as realization struck. Exactly, Wilson replied. I saw just enough of your fight with Karen to see her final trick. It was clever, but soul constructs like that have their limits. If she tried to create her illusions right next to another fighter, for example, he explained, that fighter's own soul would interfere with their creation, and so she must create them at at least some short distance, giving an opponent with sufficient skill time to react. I doubt that she would have even tried to use it against you if you were more experienced, and if you're able to master this life energy radar variation of a sixth sense, you'll be able to catch her by surprise the first time she tries again. 
Joe was even more excited now. Jen and Tucker were right there with her. But because they were all so gung-ho about this next stage in their training, they didn't notice that Sarah seemed disappointed by Wilson's answer. Only Wilson seemed to catch on, but he set the observation aside for the time being. All right, Wilson announced. I want you to grab some bandages to use as blindfolds and then pair up and practice this technique. If you can't make a life energy aura on command yet, try mixing your soul and life energy and then sending your life energy out in large bursts. I don't expect you to make much progress today, but I do expect you to have a basic understanding of the principles at least by this evening. With that, just as he had after teaching them the principle behind the life energy aura, Wilson went and sat on the furthest mat, facing away from the dueling hearts, and began to meditate. Tucker immediately imposed himself on Jen. He had never been able to beat her one-on-one -on -one and was looking forward to taking a few jabs at her while she was blinded. That left Joe and Sarah to spar against each other. Sarah did her best not to look reluctant, and her sister didn't notice. Joe, blindfold already in hand, volunteered to play the defender first. Her recent moment of clarity had inflated her ego a bit, but it didn't come again as she took multiple hits to many of her most vulnerable areas. Even though Sarah held back the full force of her attacks, she was quicker to strike and still managed to hit harder than Wilson had. By the time Wilson finally instructed the group to swap roles, Joe was covered in tiny little aching bruises. She took a minute while Sarah wrapped the blindfold around her head to get a drink of water and crank her healing R up to 11, marveling all over again as those bruises disappeared. Joe turned to Sarah, who stood ready with her eyes securely covered. Unable to help herself, she tried to advise her sister, despite Sarah's independent nature. All right, Joe reminded her. Remember what Wilson said. Don't worry about the aura for now. Just try sending out as much life energy as you can normally. Sarah snarled at her. I know. Joe stepped back into her back stance and waited. A second went by, and then another second, and then a third. Joe was confused. She was waiting to feel the distinctive surge of energy and disturbance of the air that meant that her sister had forced her energies to mix. But those feelings never came. So she was even more confused when Sarah said, Are you going to attack or not? Joe shrugged. Maybe her senses were out of whack from the day's training, or maybe Sarah could somehow mix her energies without an observer feeling it out. After all, as far as Joe could remember, she had never felt Sarah mix her energies together before. Either way, Joe trusted her sister, so she trusted that she was prepared. She zipped in close, swerved to the side, and then struck Sarah quickly in the obliques before zipping back and around to her other side. Sarah turned, reflexively, to face in the direction of Joe's attack. Seeing an obvious opening, Joe zipped in close again and jabbed Sarah lightly in the lower and the upper spine, stepping quickly and quietly around to her other side just as Sarah turned again toward where Joe had just been. This time, Sarah lashed out with two quick strikes of her own. Joe smiled. As much as she wanted Sarah to improve, the two of them were still sisters, and so picking on Sarah still amused her. Maybe Joe took it a little too far at that point, shadow stepping so that she could effectively wrap Sarah in both of her sides at once. As Sarah jumped and turned in a circle, sweeping wide with her fierce little fists, Joe suppressed a laugh. She shadow stepped again, past Sarah this time, poking her in the sides of her head as she did. Sarah swatted at her head and spun around rapidly again. This time she lost her footing for just a moment and stumbled slightly, but slightly was enough. And Joe chuckled, and Sarah turned to face her, fuming. Sorry, Joe said quickly. I'll be serious, I promise. Sarah took up her ready stance again, slowly and deliberately, and Joe followed suit. She moved without her shadow step again, but was still able to strike again and again unimpeded. She pressed and pressed, paying too much attention to where and how she would strike to notice immediately as Sarah became more and more frustrated. It wasn't long before Sarah snapped. Joe stumbled back as her sister lashed out with her soul, filling the room with her energy, grabbing the moisture in the air, pooling it into little pools that hovered around her head. She failed to suppress a sob, and all of that water blasted out in every direction. Sarah peeled the blindfold from her face and threw it to the floor. She was crying, but she looked away from the others, trying to hide it. Realizing that she was failing, she turned and surged toward the door. The other dueling hearts were shocked, unmoving, all except for Joe, who followed after her without even thinking about it. She was out the door on her sister's heels. Sarah, Joe cried after her, wait up, where are you going? Sarah slowed and turned just enough so that she could easily look back at her sister. I'm done. This training is pointless. Joe was taken aback by that. What do you mean? I mean that this is stupid, Sarah said slowly and deliberately, and I'm not doing it anymore. But... Joe stammered. If you don't finish training, then you won't be ready for your rematch with the Soul Takers. They'll take your soul. Sarah said nothing. Sarah. 
Joe insisted. Did you hear me? They will take it. You will lose your soul, maybe forever. You could even die. Maybe they should take it, Sarah said, quietly, almost as if she hoped that her sister wouldn't hear. But she wasn't so lucky. Joe was flabbergasted. What are you talking about? Sarah ignored her and started walking away. Joe, unwilling to accept her sister's attitude, reached out and grabbed her arm. The same arm that she had fallen on during her fight with Christopher days ago. Soul crackled between the two sisters, signifying they might at any moment come to blows. Thankfully that never happened, because when Joe felt a shudder of pain run through her sister's arm, she let go. The energy building between them died down and Joe took a step back. Your arm is still hurt. A detail on her sister's face caught her eye, and before Sarah could react, Joe reached out and touched the area around her sister's eye, the same eye that had been badly injured in her fight with Team Beatdown. Her fingers came away dusted with makeup. Y your eye isn't healed yet either, Joe remarked, her voice quivering. Sarah stood there, unable to meet her sister's gaze, holding her injured arm with her other hand. Joe looked her over and noticed uh, that she was once again favoring the leg that Monty had injured. She'd been favoring it again ever since she'd released her soul in the dojo. Joe was taken aback, remembering small details that she hadn't consciously picked up on throughout the day. And finally she realized the truth. He, you can't control life energy, can you? Sarah hesitated. Every fabric of her being ached to, to tell her sister the truth, to confide in her. But all of those same parts contradicted themselves, screaming to keep the truth a secret. But there was no point anymore. Joe had figured it out. She'd said the words out loud, and hearing them spoken for the first time, Sarah just couldn't hold it in anymore. She let it all flow out of her, all of the pain and the uncertainty. I don't know for sure that I can't, she blurted, just that I haven't been able to. So you didn't create a healing aura, Joe realized, and you never used Mom's techniques to heal yourself. A fresh wave of shock rolled over her. You've never been able to use any of Mom's techniques at all. She assessed her sister all over again. She was small and fragile, at least when compared to her peers, and yet she had managed to become one of the most gifted fighters in the area. Now Joe knew that she had done so under the weight of every injury from every past battle, at least until those injuries had managed to heal on their own. Sarah was, in a way, just like Joe, incapable of healing herself any faster than a regular person, only for a different reason. Not only that, but Sarah had managed to achieve the level of skill that she had without ever mixing soul with her life energy to make herself stronger. And no wonder she hadn't been able to make a traditional aura. She literally wasn't capable. Sarah, Joe said, I don't know what to say. I'm so sorry. Sarah scowled. That's why I didn't want you to know. I knew you'd take pity on me, that you'd feel sorry for me. Joe frowned. Of course Sarah would feel that way. And Joe would feel that way in her place. Okay, fine, Joe told her. How about this? I already thought that you were a great fighter, but now I know for sure. You might be one of the most dedicated soul fighters to ever live. You're incredibly strong, even with this limiting your abilities. Sarah's scowl lessened. I don't even know if it matters anyway, Sarah replied in a defeated monotone. I'm not like you, Joe. I didn't decide when I was a little kid that a soul fighter was all I ever wanted to be. It wouldn't be the end of the world if I lost my soul right now and never got it back. But you still deserve the option, Joe insisted, to become a soul fighter too, if that's what you end up wanting. This is something that we can work on. Soul training is really psychological. If you can't make your life energy do what you want, there is a reason that we can work through together. You don't know that, Sarah snapped. I do, Joe snapped right back. You're my sister and you can do anything. Sarah turned away from her sister again so that Joe wouldn't see the tears beginning to reform in her eyes. It's going to be rough, Joe explained. We'll have to work in our free time, on top of our other training. But the two of us together can pull it off. I know we can. Uh, but you should get Mom to heal you first. I don't understand why you didn't in the first place. Because then she'd know, Sarah explained, that I couldn't do it myself. You have no idea what it's like being the daughter of someone who's famous for life energy techniques, but not able to use any of them. She was shaking. She was so ashamed. Her deepest secrets were coming to light, and it left her feeling raw and sensitive and exposed. From her perspective, her situation looked different from anyone else's. No one was like her, and so no one could understand. Joe could try to relate, but she never would. She was brilliant. She mastered every technique that she tried. Even the technique from today, Joe had managed to pull it off in only a few tries, even if it was only once. So you can imagine how surprised Sarah was when her sister said, 
Are you sure about that? Sarah's gaze turned toward Joe, eager to confirm what she'd heard. Sure enough, she'd heard right, and Joe was crying too. Not heavily, but there were tears in her eyes and a raggedness to her breathing. Did you forget, Joe asked, that I have the wrong kind of soul? Sarah reacted without thinking. Oh no, Joe, come on. It's true though, Joe insisted, wiping the tears from her own eyes. In this context, at least. Mom's techniques are all about drawing life energy from nature, but I have an unnatural soul. I can't control any life energy except my own, and nothing will ever change that. I don't think about it much because I really don't care if my soul is unnatural or not, but it's still hard to hear Mom teaching, or to see her practicing her signature abilities, knowing that I will never be able to practice them with her. Not to mention, she thought, how often I wonder if Mom thinks less of me because my soul isn't like hers. Joe couldn't bring herself to say it out loud, but she got the sense that Sarah could hear those words in her silence. Joe looked her sister in the eyes. So I get it. And I get why it would bother you so much. And it's why I want to help you get past this. There's no reason why both of us should have to feel like this. Joe smiled. I actually think it'll make me feel better about my own limits. I already feel better knowing that you understand how I feel and that I can talk to you about this if I need to. Hearing that, Sarah lost it. She lunged at her sister and threw her arms around her. Joe embraced Sarah in kind. They were both crying now, but neither of them really liked that very much, so they immediately fought to restrain themselves again. I should have told you, Sarah said through messy sniffling. Yeah, Joe said with a chuckle, you probably should have. But I should have told you how I felt too. If I had, maybe you would have felt like you could say something sooner. She pulled back from Sarah and looked her in the eyes. We have to talk to each other more from now on. We've got each other's backs, all right? All right, Sarah replied with a little sideways smile. And nothing's changed, Joe said with a triumphant smirk. We're still going to get stronger. And it's strong enough that when those soul takers come back, we will beat them. This time, when Joe said it, Sarah didn't only half agree. She didn't agree just to humor her sister. This time, she was psyched up. This time, she believed it. So, after collecting themselves and erasing as many indications of their unpleasantly emotional conversation as they could, the sisters returned to the dojo interior. Sarah found that she was excited to continue her training. She was even, in a lesser and more distant way, excited to fight the Soul Takers again.